Hey everyone, it's Ellie May with Silhouette Secrets Plus, and today I'm going to be sharing how I made these magnetic bookmarks. So you're first going to start in your Silhouette Studio software, and you want to start by setting up your page size. Now it's going to depend on what you're going to be working with, whether you're going to be working with graphics or just cut files on how you create your designs and for your project. I'm going to be working with graphic files, so I'm going to be printing onto letter size paper. So I'm going to set this up for a print and cut. I'm going to choose the third tab at the top is my registration marks, and I'm going to choose on, and then I'm going to click on restore defaults. Your default registration marks are going to give you your most accurate print and cut results with the Silhouette machines. Next, I'm going to come up here to file, and I'm going to choose merge. Since I've already set my page up for the print and cut, I'm simply going to merge my graphic image onto my page. Now, I will link in the description below resources for the files that I'm going to be using to create these bookmarks, and also some additional tutorials for additional information on tools that I'm using. So I'm just going to choose this PNG file here. I do have the auto trace feature turned off because I don't need it for this project. I am going to be tracing this, but I don't need the extra data and the extra taxing on my processor that the auto trace uses. More information in the description on that. So now you want to size your image down to what you want it to be. And this is going to vary for all images. With a PNG file, keep in mind that a PNG is a flattened graphic image, which means it's a photo. That means it does have extra space around the edges of this image. So the dimensions that you see on either side are not the accurate dimensions of the image. If I move this over here onto my grid, each grid space is an inch, you can kind of gauge the dimensions of my image. So this is approximately two and a half inches tall. That's going to work for my project, so I'm going to bring it back over here. And then since my image is black, mostly black, it's going to trace very well, and I just need a simple trace of the outer edge. It does not have to be perfect. So I'm going to click on the trace icon on the right side, this looks like a butterfly or a piece of toast. And then I'm going to select trace area. Draw a box around that. And then since I just need the outer edge, I can simply increase the threshold all the way. Now I'm gonna zoom in here and show you a couple things. When I increase that threshold, there's a few spots on that graphic image that show up on the outer edges. And another one that doesn't show as yellow inside. That's okay, I know how to work with it. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. I'm gonna choose trace, and then I can go ahead and move my graphic image off for a second, and you can see that I have these little red dots that are called artifacts. So what I wanna do is I wanna click on my image, right click, and choose release compound path. When I do that, you see that all of these little pieces now have a selection box around it. I'm going to click off of it, and then I can move my cut line away Left click and drag and select all of those little artifacts and press delete. Now I simply have my cut outline of my cat. But what I wanna do is I wanna make an offset of this. So I'm going to select my cut line and I'm gonna come over here to the offset panel, which is the little star with the offset around it. I'm gonna choose offset. And then you're going to decide how large of an offset that you want. I see this little tiny piece in here. I could do the same little trick with release compound path, or I could come in here and just increase this by one, click up, and it's going to get rid of that. I'm going, to, this is going to work for my project. What size offset you use is going to be dependent on your design that you're working with and how large of an offset you want around your image. I'm gonna choose apply. And then I can either delete my original cut line or just move it off. I'm going to left click and select both my offset and my image and I can use the center option. Now my cat is centered inside of that offset. Now if this offset is too large, you could always come in here and you could do an internal offset and then adjust the size as well. So let's go ahead and go with that internal offset. Kind of makes that top a little funky. I'm not sure which one I like better. Let's see here. Um, grab this internal and move it away. 
and you can decide which one you like. I don't think I like this internal offset, but that's okay. That was my graphic. I can always do it again. Internal offset, whoops. If you get, okay, let's go back here. If for some reason, when you choose offset, you get the square, that means that your graphic image is the image is the item that was selected when you selected that offset. You need to make sure that the outer cut line is what you wanna do the offset on. And then if I increase this just a little bit more, apply. And again, it's gonna be a personal preference. So select this outer and move it away. Okay, we'll go with that. I always like to keep pieces of my design in case I wanna go back or use those again. I can go ahead and save the file here. Now, once the file is saved for the magnetic bookmark, I'm gonna come out here and zoom out a little bit. I need a flipped or mirrored image on top because this is gonna be folded over a page and the magnet's going to hold it together. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna select both of these. I'm going to go ahead and group those together. And then I'm gonna come over here to the replicate panel and I can simply replicate up. And then I don't want them to be that close together. I'm simply going to move my arrow keys up. And this distance is completely dependent on you and your files. So if I select both of those, you can see this outside measurement is about six inches, which means when it's folded in half, it's going to be approximately three inches tall. And that sounds about right to me. In order to join these two, I can come in here, zoom in a little bit. I'm simply going to come over here. And there's a couple ways. You can kind of see that they are odd shaped. You can simply come in here and draw a rectangle to connect them. And then you can see this doesn't really connect. I can easily just click on, double click on the rectangle, bring up my edit points, and then I can kind of drag these in here. If I click on that red line again, it's going to drop an edit point on that line, and I can kind of adjust these up. And all I'm looking for is that it's overlapping this red line. So I can bring it in here, just kind of adjust this. When I click off of it, it's going to take away those edit points. Now what I need to do is I grouped this cut line to the graphic. I need to come in here and ungroup it because I only want to work with the cut line. So ungroup on both of the graphic images. And then I want to select the cut line, the offset here, hold my shift key down, select the offset on this upper cat, and then with my shift key still held down, select this rectangle that is connecting the two of them. And then I can right click and choose weld. Now, if something, if it doesn't weld just the cut lines and something goes goofy with your graphic image, that means that your graphic was selected and not your cut line. And then depending on the materials you're going to be using to make your final project, you may or may not want a score line. So if I come over here to the left-hand side, I can easily use this line drawing tool Hold my shift key down and I can draw a line approximately in the center of it. And then what I can do is I can change this line style under the line style panel and change that to a dashed line. And then I'm going to select just the cut line and my dashed line, hold my shift key down, and I can choose to center that. And then that would be in the center. Now again, it depends on what kind of materials that you're going to be using. If you're going to be using a laminate on top of cardstock, this may not work the best to have a score line cut at the very top. It's going to cut into that laminate and probably not into your cardstock. In that case, you would probably just work with your material after it's cut to get it to fold and to form into that shape. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I'm going to move this score line off, but it really just depends on what you're working with for your materials. Now, once I have this all how I would like it, I'm going to select everything by left click and dragging. I'm gonna right click and I'm going to choose group. Now this image moves as one piece. So now I have my first magnetic bookmark. 
Now I'm going to fill the rest of this page and then I'm going to show you how I do the print and the cut. And then I just finished setting up my design and the exact same steps that I showed in the beginning of the video, I filled the page with the design that I wanted to send. And then I went to the top left corner to file print. I did have to change my printer because I had been previously printing to a sublimation printer. So I had to select that printer, click on preferences. I need to print from my rear tray and I changed it to a glossy photo paper. Uh, the photo paper is pretty thin. It still worked, but you might want to test your supplies. I'll share some more using 110 cardstock later on. And then I took that printed page. It is a glossy page. Now, previously in the with the Silhouette models, they don't really like glossy materials or especially a laminate or overlay over top of those registration marks. I was gonna cut them off, but the way my design was, it was kind of funky. So I ended up saying, what the heck? And the Cameo 5 is supposed to be better at reading registration marks on glossy materials. So I said, let's test this out. And so I applied the laminate on top of this and it, laminate just takes practice. I did get a little bit of a wrinkle in there, but everything else worked out. I had no air bubbles or anything like that. It just takes practice. And it's much more difficult to do on camera than it is um, when you're not recording yourself. And the second time I did this, it was much, much easier. So then I just added it to my cutting mat and loaded that into my machine. So we're gonna give this a test shot, cross my fingers that it's going to work with the glossy material. And then back in the Silhouette Studio software, I chose my material. I was waiting for my machine to be recognized because I had just turned it on. So I chose cardstock textured and then I increased my settings just a little bit. You're going to have to test cut for your materials. With laminate on top, you are adding an extra material on top and all materials are going to vary, especially with a laminate on top. Laminate varies greatly. So then I just sent this, and the one thing you can do after you've sent it to cut before you unload it is to check that it cut. So this setting, I used a four with a force of 33. It worked well, it cut, and then I checked my cut before I took it off the mat. Again, test cut, test cut, test cut. All settings are going to vary, especially if you have a used blade. And then you want to carefully peel the mat away from your material. That will help your materials from not curling. You can still see I still had some curling. And then if you wanna cut a backing for this, this is a complete personal preference. I came up and I did file, save as, and created a second file. So this is the back side. And then you can decide how you wanna do this. I didn't need those pieces on the file. And then I needed to turn off the registration marks because I'm not going to be printing. So I just came to that, chose off. And you could simply send this to cut as is. It's only going to cut the outer red border that you see. Or if it bugs you, you can come back in and you can ungroup your files and you can either remove those graphics and delete them or just move them off to the side. Their graphics aren't gonna matter because you're not sending it through your printer. And then you can adjust those to save paper if you choose to do so. And that's what I did here. I saved my scraps and then I just sent the backing to cut. And adding a backing is a complete personal preference. Now with the magnets, you wanna test that. So I just cut off some test pieces and made sure that they would stick to each other with these two that I am testing. They are both different thicknesses and one is a bit stronger than the other, and I don't know if that's the actual magnet strength or if it's because of the width of the uh, magnet tape. But the Aleens is what I would recommend and I, what I have linked. Now, I'd also recommend that if you're using tape to take it out of the package and cut off a chunk that you're going to use and then lay it under something heavy to flatten it out. Mine warped here a little bit, but then you can decide if you wanna do the backing on it. Now you'd have to find a glue that would hold that together. So I didn't decide to do the backing on that one. And then this time I decided to test the second magnet and it works. So I tested those and if you stick them together and then peel one side off, put it down and then peel the other side off and lay that flat, it will line up if you have that um, creased the way you should. 
So then on this one, I decided I'd use a backing because it's square, it's easy to do. So you want a super strong double-sided stick tape is what I used, but whatever um, adhesive that you use, it's going to need to be very, very strong to hold that together around that magnet. So keep that in mind when you are working with your materials. Now, I just had these on hand since it was square, the double-sided tape is super strong. I just had to um, burnish that down with my uh, crease tool there. And then I did have to press this together a couple of times, and that's just to get that adhesive to set. And I wouldn't use it right away. I would let the adhesive um, cure a little bit before I actually started using that for the bookmark. This one's already claimed by my youngest. So, um, and I wish I could find the design, but now I can't find it anymore. And so here is a slow motion. It's in real time testing these magnets. So you wanna make sure that one was the Aleens. The skinnier one here is the um, Pro Mag from Michaels. These are both, I picked them up at Michaels, but you can find the Aleens on the Amazon link. And then, so I'm just kind of testing these out and it's gonna make a difference, the strength of your magnet. And if your magnet is flat, you can see that mine is kind of warped in that area. And so it kind of warped out on my design. So I would recommend getting it flat before you actually put it onto your project. And here's a look at those fully. Kind of fun to just play around with. And so I sent a second set of designs so that I could test another set of magnets that is coming from Amazon. I wasn't patient enough to begin with, so I started testing some that I just picked up at Michael's. So here's my second one. I am using a 110 cardstock that I'll have linked in the supply list as well. It is thicker than that photo paper, and then I applied the laminate on top of that too. So what I did was I ended up doing cardstock textured, and I sent two passes around everything, and it cut well. So everything cut out well here, and then as it finished up, I did check my cut, because if it did not cut, I could send it back through again. And then I flipped my mat over and peeled my mat away from my material and peeled the rest of those off of my cutting mat as well. And now I have some to test with another set of magnets. So here is the pack that I ordered from Amazon. They are squares. They are pretty strong. Um, you wanna just double check and put them together first because these ones don't line up due to the polarity. They don't line up perfectly square, but they work. So I just stuck it in there, folded it down, and then they worked pretty darn good. Um, but you can notice that they do not exactly line up and it depended on where they were on that magnet sheet. You'll see me test um, the magnets up and down to each other right here. And those ones didn't work quite as well. They were off even farther than the ones that were side by side. So you want to make sure to test your magnets. So here is a look at some of these and they turned out great. So I have the links in the description below for the supplies that I used. And if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments below. Make sure to like, subscribe, and click that bell for notifications, but a fun project. Thanks for joining me and have a great day.